talking about today, Mama Bears. And I, I'm telling you, that song is so appropriate because no one, you know, has cleaned up my son's, you know what, and, or, or vomit or anything else or, you know, like we're there day in and day out and no one else is going to tell us what to do with our children. Amen. So, um, G uh, October 12th, you know, they're hosting, it's uh, Jenny Donnelly and Lou Engel and them, they're, ha they're hoping for and they're believing God for a million women march on the mall in D.C. And for women standing up for our family and for what's right. And that the government's not going to raise our children. We are. Amen? But we have a voice and we need to stand and do what's right. And, um, but man, D, when I heard that song, I thought, oh, that is such a good song. Kim Walker, she has three little kids and you know, um, that was an awesome song, and we will keep playing that song. So, amen, amen. So we are the Mama Bears, and I'm going to talk a little bit about, you've heard me speak in the past, I, I love Deborah, but um, we're going to talk a little bit about her today. And, um, but before that, I want to thank my family, Rosemary and Joe, for coming, and my sisters, my son, my niece, Melissa. Melissa, stand up. She's the one who makes the, the meatball mix. My mother's famous meatball recipe that she has worked it out, and everybody loves her meatball mix. She was just at Sonoma, I heard, and um, selling her products. So there you go. Now, next time, you just need to bring your stuff, okay? <laughs> anyway, so, you know, years ago, Chuck Pierce, who was here last week, wrote a book called God's Unfolding Battle Plan. And um, he wrote a book... And he was, he was talking about the Antichrist structure, the Antichrist system. And what that is, is a system that goes against godly principles, all right? You can say it's a spirit, but it's, it's a structure that has infiltrated the minds of people who don't know the word, who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, okay? And this is some of the things that he wrote in his book, okay? So... The Antichrist system is a demonic-based structure. Hold on, go back to that. <laughs> okay, God didn't put that in my notes. The Antichrist uh, system is a demonic-based structure that holds as its main mission the destruction of the body of Christ. All right? So um, it says here, number one, the Antichrist system attempts to create a division. Now, he wrote this book in the early 2000s uh, uh, to uh, create a division of baseless hatred between Jewish people and all others. They are a reminder of his imminent defeat. Uh, look what's going on now. Number two, the abuse of prof the prophetic gifting. The enemy has raised up a counterfeit to confuse and alienate. The oppression of women. That's always been. We cannot, listen, we, can't fill, we cannot fill the great commission without men and women working side by side. This would bring order to the church, and women will be used greatly in end times. And let me just tell you something, and I'll repeat that. Wherever there is, a, you know, oppression of women, that is a religious spirit. And you'll see in the beginning, the law of first, God always had women involved. We are not subservient. Now, this isn't an anti-men message, message. This is a, a, where we honor and prefer each other. But women have, have power and authority. And the enemy's afraid of us, I'm just saying. So the next one is ethnic domination. The Lord desires racial reconciliation. The Antichrist structure requires domination and wants everybody to be against each other. And then sexual perversion, hello. The enemy desires to lead people into willful rebellion, wickedness, and corruption, all characteristics of perversion. We must understand this is not a private issue, but a demonic structure established to invade every facet of our culture while preventing God's will from being done. So this is something that, that you know, it's nothing new. God's not surprised by anything that's happening. But he wants us to take a stand. He wants us. We can't be, you know, and I say this often, lukewarm. It's either you're hot or you're cold. You have to know the word or you don't, right, so that we can take a stand. And so I looked up the word. The Lord spoke to me about courage. Women, and, and listen, this isn't a non-gender message, really. I'm, it's Mother's Day today, so I'm focusing on women. But this is for all of us, okay? Courage. And so when you look up the word courage, 
It means the quality of mind or spirit that enables a person to face difficulty, danger, pain without fear and bravery. And, and we are people of courage, all right? And so some of the synonyms are brave, gallant, undaunted, lion-hearted, gutsy, fearless. I know there's a lot of women from Patterson here that fit that. <laughs> women from all over, but we will slap you down, let me tell you. So if you grew up in our neighborhood. <laughs> so, I mean, just women in general. Just mess with their kids. And the mama bear will rise out and, and take you out. I promise you. So we have God's DNA in us. And one of the names of God is that in Exodus somewhere, I think it's 15, it says that God is a man of war. He is the God of love. He's the God of kindness. He's a God of mercy. But the other aspect of him is that he's a man of war. And we have that DNA in us too. And we need to take that stand in war when necessary. Amen? Especially when it comes to our family. So Webster's Dictionary says, Courageous women who aren't afraid to support unpopular causes. That aren't afraid of what people think. That are more concerned about the fear of the Lord and what God thinks. All right, another example of a courageous woman is, it said, this is what Webster said, the courageous decision to quit rather than obey in a legal order. Amen? So courage helps us push through beyond. And we are people of courage. Courage enables us to have a victorious spirit when you feel like crawling into a hole. Right? The past couple of months, it's like... <laughs> You know, the, the, you know, the lie was just isolate, have nothing to do with anybody, you know, forget God and just sit down and hide. But you can't listen to what your soul is saying. Right. Amen. You have to allow the spirit of God to move you on because then what? Then you're more miserable. <laughs> so uh, courage causes us to realize we are living for our power, a higher cause because we got the power of God backing us. So what I wanted to do, and I know that this is a Mother's Day message, but I really felt like I need to give a little explanation because I know we have a lot of people online watching. And, and in Genesis, when, when it says in Genesis 2.18, and the Lord God said, it is not that God, I mean, I'm sorry. And the Lord God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. All right? And I want to give you the meaning, the definition from the Hebrew of a help me. Because it's really important that women, we understand our role. And men too, you have to understand the role of a woman. A woman, because remember, God, we're made in God's image. He's male, female. And so women and men need to walk together. Not one, not women dishonoring men or vice versa, but, but honor and prefer each other's giftings, okay? Yes. So the meaning, so when you look up help me, in the Hebrew, it's Ezer Kenego. That's my, my version of how you say it. All right? And so, in Hebrew, it means to rescue, to save, and to be strong. Another definition that I didn't put literally means to surround. And so, you know, we have the man standing behind us, and you have the woman, and he's there to, to protect as well. But we're there to be strong. Just like for any wife here, that's on good terms with her husband. You say anything bad about her husband, <laughs> you're dead too. <laughs> you know, like she can say it, but you can't say it, you know? So, um, but, you know, we're, again, it's honoring and respecting. The Women's Live movement started because there was so much abuse, but they got so off course yeah. where there's such dishonor and disrespect, and there still is. I mean, I haven't watched a lot of any regular series on TV of secular TV, but uh, so I don't know, but I'm assuming it's still there, you know, where men are made to be, you know, made out to be fools. And that, that is so dishonoring. That's not who the men are. Right? Amen, men. It's not who you are. It's true because we need to honor and respect each other. Now, one of the, it says here, uh, when I was looking it up, Ezra, well, Ezer, Ezer used for the woman is used 21 times, twice in Genesis for the woman, and there was one other time. Ezer, that particular word was used for nations to whom Israel appealed for military aid. And then uh, it says Ezer was used for God as Israel's helper. 
we were in alignment with that military word and also God there, all right? And so I looked up all the scriptures, and you can look them up yourself. You can go to the next slide. Um, oh, I didn't put it up there? Oh, sorry. Don't, all right, hold on a minute. So there's um, about 20 scriptures that I have here where Ezer is used consistently in a military context. So we're warriors. Women were called to war. Women were called to war for her, her life, her family, God. We're not, listen, we're not just Susie Homemaker. And amen, sister, if you cook, you can bring food to my house. But if you cook or you knit and you said that, that has nothing to do with it. Nothing to do with it. I'm still trying to learn how to knit. I can never remember how to do it. But um, nothing to do with it. But, but God wants you to know the strength that each one of us have. And we have a voice. And we need to speak the truth in love. But we need to speak the truth in your sphere of influence. Even going and making a statement about what, what in the world, what in this government is trying to do. And take away our rights as parents. And I'm sure you all read like some of the statements about the transgenderism. Where, you know, in certain schools, certain states, parents don't have a right. These kids are like 12 and 13 years old, and they don't have to tell their parent if they're going to have body parts removed. Are you kidding me? But you can't drive. You can't drink at a certain age. But you're going to be able to alter your life without a parent's consent? No. That's where the mama bears and the papa bears have to rise up and say, not on our watch. We know what's right for them because then the ones who have had that, it doesn't make any kind of medical sense. Even a doctor knows, you know, like what it will do to alter your body. It's just ridiculous. But again, these are the times. We're not aligning, aligning with the, the mindset of what the enemy has planned. That's where we have to say, 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 wait a minute now. We love our family. We're not letting them go in that direction. And that's just not the only one. The world's crazy right now. But anyway, so the, the second part of the word is kenego, and that means opposite as to him or corresponding as to him. So the, we are no better, no less, but we're powerful together, and we're equally and un, uh, uniquely created, and we're a perfect fit. And that doesn't just mean that you have to be married. That means, ladies, this DNA is in women, period. Okay? So... Um, so anyway, so we're complementary to each other. So I just wanted to, to just explain that, that, that uh, now you can go to that quote. You can go back to that quote. I read this quote, and I thought it was good. I don't know who, who wrote it. But it says, she will be his strongest ally in pursuing God's purposes and his first roadblock when he veers off course. Amen? Isn't that true? And so, but it's, it's because of, of caring and loving and vice versa. It works both ways. So as a woman... Now, we'll get back to the mama bear thing. As a woman, we are called to bring change in our sphere of influence. Mother's nature. We nurture nature. We nurture, right? We have a victorious spirit. But here's the thing. Like, even the world for so long has said you have to look a certain way. You have to feel a certain way. You have to think a certain way. And the world has for too long dictated our, our position, right? And so there's been an identity theft issue. And, and that he's pulled off in epic proportions, and the enemy convince, convince, tries to convince us that we're not who God created us to be, all right? With, we have it, some, sometimes some women have a distorted sense of identity. I'm weak, I don't have it in me. Just because you're a warrior doesn't mean you're a screaming Mimi. It doesn't mean that you're like, oh, you know, hear me roar, and you're you know, ready to bop everybody over the head. What it means is you know who you are in Christ, and you're taking a stand, and I'm not backing down. Here's what the word says. Here is who I am, and I'm not inferior. If the enemy can stop us from realizing who we are, he remains in control, and he keeps us beneath our identity. And so we don't want that. So now when we... When we um, look at the book of Judges, you know, I just love the book of Judges. And you know what, Ray's? I'm going to skip reading it out of the Amplified because, you know, I love reading all my different versions. But I did type out the, the, the um, Passion version, okay? So starting with verse 4 in the Passion. I know I always kind of shift Ray's around here. Sorry, Ray's. Okay, there we go. It says here, now, God raised up Deborah to lead Israel as a champion, as a champion deliverer. That's who you are. 
champion delivers to your families, to your sphere of influence, to where you work, to who you have influence over. She was a prophetess, and it says a fiery woman. Deborah cried out. She was a fam female judge, and she chose to move forward courageously. And so, um, let's see here. All right, I will read from the Amplified, sorry. <laughs> I didn't put it all in here. Hold on a second. Um, in the book of Judges, all right, Judges 4, 1 through 4. All right, in the Amplified, it says, But the Israelites again did evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. He was one of the judges. So the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harosheth Hagomi. Then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help, for Jabin, he was the king there, had 900 iron chariots and had oppressed and tormented the sons of Israel severely for 20 years. Let me just pause there. When you look up the word Jabin, it means intellect, cunning. And, and here's what's happening, like let's bring it to today's age, you know, where it's the intellect, it's the philosophy of man, it's, it's even our own thought process that can hinder us. And so when you look at it, they were on foot. The Israelites had 900 chariots of iron. When you look at that odds, you're kind of freaked out and thinking, oh, Lord, <laughs> we're going to get destroyed here. But God. And so this is what they were up against. 900 chariots of armor, of, of, of you know, um, 900 <laughs> iron chariots. And they were oppressed and they were tormented. So it wasn't just that. There had been oppression. There had just been, you know, just a day in and day out of torment, of you're defeated, you're not going to win. You know, they were rebellious and they didn't do what was right in the sight of the Lord. But God in his mercy was there for them. All right? Then it says, now, Deborah, you all are Deborahs, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at that time. She was, in, she was in authority. She was a judge. So God raised up Deborah to lead Israel as a champion deliverer. She was a prophetess, like I said before, and a fiery woman. And so when you go down, it says in um, Judges 4, verse 5, and she would sit under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah, which uh, meant high place, and Bethel means house of God. So she had a war between the idolatry in the land and what is God saying. That's just like us, no different. We're warring between the idolatrous sin in our culture and what is God saying? You know, because what happens? They mock, oh, you're so religious, oh, you're so ridiculous. Nuh uh. God is our designer. He knows from the beginning and he knows the end. He knows the ways, and the Bible even says he directs our path. He knows the way in which we should walk in it for our protection. And listen, God loves all people. He, he doesn't want that any should perish. But he wants, when you have a revelation of the goodness of God, when you have a revelation of what he wants to do for us, that's where it's like, Lord, I choose to obey. I choose to obey whether my soul feels like it or not. I choose to worship you whether I want to or not. It's not about what I want. It's like, Lord, I know what will help me cross over. I know what strengthens me. All right? And so um, it says here in Judges 4, 6 through 9, everybody alive? You're okay? All right. It says, one day she sent for Barak, Deborah, son of Abonim, from the, he's clearly not Italian, from the city of Kadesh, in Naphtali and said to him, Yahweh, the God of Israel, she's saying, listen, the Lord's given me this word, commands you, go deploy 10,000 men from the tribes of Naphtali and Zebulon and march to Mount Tabor. And this is still God. I will draw Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, to fight against you at the Kishon River. And he will have as many chariots and soldiers, but I will give you victory over him. It's just like us. We have a lot of obstacles, a lot of things like that's happening in the world now, and it seems overwhelming. But God is saying, I will give you victory through this. Just listen to what I'm saying. Hear my direction, okay? And so Barak then replied, if you go, I will go if you go with me. But if you don't go with me, I won't go either. And very well, she answered, I will go with you, but you will receive no glory in the victory because Yahweh will hand over Sisera to a woman. So Deborah set off for Kadesh with Barak. Now, I just want to say something here. I know a lot of commentaries say a lot of things about Barak being, you know, he was intimidated. But he was captain of an army. 
I don't believe he was intimidated. I mean, she said, I mean, the different versions said, you know, the woman would get the glory. So what? As long as the army's won. But I believe it's a picture of men and women working together. Right. It's the apostolic and the prophetic. It's there. They needed each other to win this battle. Yeah. All right? So um, when Sisera found out that Barak, son of whoever, was marching towards Mount Tabor, she gathered together his 900 iron rim chariots, and all soldiers sent them from... Harasheth of the Gentiles to the Kishon River. Then Deborah prophesied and says, Today, today, Yahweh has given you victory over Sisera. Go, Yahweh is marching out before you. Now again, you have to remember, it didn't look that way. But here's what the word of the Lord is saying. Go, you have victory, you're victorious. You have a victorious spirit in you. You're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens you. So immediately Barak charged down from Mount Tabor with his 10,000 warriors. And Yahweh threw Sisera and his army into confusion before the onslaught of Barak and his men. And Sisera and all his chariots and men were overwhelmed. He leaped from his chariot and fled on foot. Barak pursued the other chariots and the army to Hishera, Her Herashes, of the Gentiles until Sisera's whole army was killed by the sword and only Sisera survived. Now he ran for his life to the tent of Jael, wife of Heber, the Kenite, for there was friendship between the king and this guy. So I wrote here, what's a girl to do when a surprise visitor arrives at your door? What are you going to do? We've all had these surprise visitors lately. We've had death. We've had fear. We've had financial despair. We've had all these different things that have come our way knocking at our door. And when I was reading this, I thought, oh, my gosh, Lord, I see this so clearly. And he came running, and he's knocking. Are we going to let the enemy in? Are we going to let him in and dictate into our lives, right? And so Jael came out of her tent to greet Sister and said, come on in, because she had a plan. Come on in. You have nothing to fear. Little did he know. He didn't have any discernment. As soon as he entered her tent, she hid him under a blanket. And Sisera said to her, I am so thirsty. Please let me have some water. She says, oh, I'll give you something to drink. <laughs> and she opened a skim of milk, gave him some to drink, and covered him again. She could have put some x lax in there too. But anyway, he said to her, stand at the entrance of your tent. And if anyone comes and asks you if there's anybody here, tell them no. Exhausted, he fell asleep under the blanket. While he slept, Jael took a tent peg. And I, said, I know it sounds terrible, but we have, you know, Deuteronomy 7 says, have no mercy on the enemy. And it says here, and he took a tent peg in one hand and a hammer in the other and tiptoed over to where he was lying. And with a crushing blow, she drove the tent peg through his temple until it went down into the ground. He was dead. And that's what we have to do with the negative mindsets. We have to put a tent peg through the mindsets of lies that are counter to the word of God. And we have to put that tent peg in and hammer it and hammer the lies until we are in alignment and agreement with the word of God. That's what we need to do. Because too often, the enemy is constantly trying to tell us the ways of the world and the other ways that we have to think. But God is our designer. He know, again, like I said, he knows the end of, from the beginning. He knows what works best for us. Listen, half of us here weren't serving the Lord for a while, right? How did it work for you? You know, sometimes we act like we think we know more than Jesus. Well, this is good and that's good. No, it's not. Because he's the only one who is the Prince of Peace, who's called the Prince of Peace, that can give us the shalom of God, that can give us that peace that only he can give. He's the one that gives us the wisdom. Because he that's one of his names. He's counselor. He's mighty God. He's full of wisdom. He's understanding. He's the only one that we can get the downloads from. Yes, he's blessed our minds. He's given us the ability because that's how he created us with that creative anointing, that creative ability. But if you want to go beyond, then you tap into the spirit of God to hear what the spirit of God has to say to us. See, but, you know, I'll tell you, the enemy, what his goal is, is to get us to, to, to think outside and to limit him. And God in Psalm 78 says that what really aggravated God is when they limited the Holy One of Israel because of unbelief. And so even here, it's like, Lord, check my heart to see if I'm obstinate towards you, if my heart is hardened towards you. If, listen, you don't think my heart has been trying to get hardened towards the Lord? 
You know, and I said, Lord, help me, because I know that's not the way to go, because I've had a hardened heart, and it doesn't work. That's where you don't understand the word. The word is like that scene that ricochets right off of you when you are walking with a hardened heart. And I said, oh, no, no, no. See, that's a slick thing, knocking at the door. Hey, look at how God didn't come through for you in this case. Harden your heart. You know, go through the motions, go to church, but don't allow your heart to be open to the things of the Lord. Don't allow your heart to go there. That's what the enemy's plan. See, he's subtle. He's slick. But God, are you going to let him in? No. And so I said, no, no, I'm putting that hammer through that lie. I'm putting that hammer through that emotion that's trying to say this and that other than what the Spirit of God is trying to say because I have lived without God. And I'll tell you, it's much better living with God, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of your disappointment. It's so much better living with God than without Him. Amen? Amen. And so she, she took Him out. Women, we have that ability. We're there to honor. We're there to take a stand. We're there to war. We're there to say, uh-uh, not on my watch. You're not messing with my kids. You're not going to tell my kids the way they need to live. That comes from their mama. I'm the one who's going to nurture. But let me tell you something. Even if you're a spiritual mom, you might say, well, I don't have children. No, you have a role here. There are so many orphan kids out there. There are so many that need the spiritual mamas to come along and put your arm around them because you have something to offer. You are a victorious, conquering woman. You have that nurturing spirit, that love that's necessary, that encouragement for people to move on, for kids to move on, spirit, soul, and body. But we need the three generations. We need the young, the middle aged, and the older. I'm in that young category, you know? So we need, we need, amen, amen. We need all the generations. We need the wild women to defeat the plans of the enemy. That's who we are. We're wild in the realm of the spirit. We know who our God is, and we will do great exploits, is what Daniel says. See, we have to see ourselves. See, the enemies try to put this cloak of disappointment and grief or despair or, or oh, my God, look at what's happening we, our prayers are, are, are like rockets. Not just prayers, but we need to be out there. We need to influence our people in love. Don't shove it down their throats, you know, just in love. Just let the Spirit of the Lord guide you. But, but we have to understand that God says don't ever give up. He's raising us up fearless, full of courage, warriors, radical army for Jesus. So I put a scripture here in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, where it says, Therefore, since we have these great and wonderful promises, beloved, let's cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, completing holiness, living a consecrated life, a life set apart for God's purpose and the fear of the Lord. Listen, that's freedom. That's fear. That's the fear of God. That's joy. That's like, God, you know what? Help me here. Whatever's in me that's not of you, take it out. Rip it out. I don't want to be in agreement with the world's way and what the world has dictated. Lord, I want to be in agreement only with what the Word is saying, right? But there's joy in God. Jesus is fun. There's laughter. There's, there's you know, peace in the Holy Spirit. And I'm not aligning myself with anything other than the Word. So, you know, check your heart out and just renounce it. Just say, Lord, you know, I don't get it. Listen, we don't understand everything. I don't know about you, but I don't understand everything right? I wish I had an answer for everything, and I don't. But I know that the Bible says in Proverbs 3 that we are to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. And in all our ways, he will, he will direct us and guide our path. See, I said, Lord, you, you, you created us. You're Elohim. You are creator God. When, when you created us in Genesis 1, we were made with your DNA, we have his mindset, his spirit. It says in, in the te New Testament that, that we are to have the mind of Christ. So, ladies, the Bible says in, in Isaiah 21, 5, Arise, you princesses, and oil your shields, for your deadly foe is at the gate. Oil your, your shield of faith. All right? And so God has given us, a, a, he's sounding an alarm. And, and that if you have thought that you are weak and inferior or that I remember one time, you know, we had a conference and, 
And I, I plan on doing it again, but it, the conference was called When Women Wore. And there were many there that came up to me that still believe that their role is just in a nursery. Wow. Nothing wrong, because children are an honor and a privilege to speak into. But what I'm saying is that's not your only role. All right? All right? And, and we are a light and as well as the men, but God is calling us to take our role and to be that judge like Deborah, not I mean in a negative way, but to be like that one that, that, that has an answer, that can nurture, that can, that can comfort, that can raise that person up, that can speak into their lives, call their destiny forward. See, that's what God wants us to do. They need that arm because we need the men. We need the men what they can offer, but now women, they need what we can offer. Amen? Not just for your family. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you people, people where you work, wherever you're at. Who can I speak into? Men too. Who can I release the love of God? And you don't have to shove the Bible down their throat. Just speak in love. Bless them. Give them hope. Right? So Isaiah 5, 5 uh, 13 says, Therefore my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it because they have no knowledge of God. Many are in captivity. Many women are in captivity. We recently watched a movie with Sally Fields. Oh, what is it called? Not with my, my daughter. Anybody ever see that years ago? And what happened in, in a certain country that she was in where, where women were so abused. And that's happening in a lot of separate, in different countries. It's happening here in America. It happens in the church. Let me tell you something. I've traveled the world. I've had the privilege to do that. And when I was not with my husband, I was treated differently than when I was with him. So we see it. We see it in the church. So, but not here. My husband always honored women. My husband always celebrated women, as we should. That's why we have... And uh, what's her name? Sharon Stone said when she came here a couple of years back, she goes, oh, Lord. She said, and the Lord said, this house will be a house full of strong women. Amen. Not women opposing men, strong in Christ, but strong in knowing who they are. Amen? Amen. And so anyway, so I don't want to be that one that lacks understanding. But that's what, that's what the scripture says when you don't know God. That's why we see all the craziness going out there, even with this anti-Semitic spirit. They don't know God. And God loves them. I mean, my Lord, we don't want to see anyone get killed or they're saying cut people's heads off. You know, the, God loves the Palestinian people. Yeah. And, and let me just say this, by the way, majority of the Palestine, Palestinian people or the Muslim are not violent at all. That's not their heart. But anyway, so again, we have to pray and we have to take a stand. We don't want to be oppressed. Religion oppresses, oppresses women. So I wrote a quote, and I'm coming down to a close. It says, heaven always sees us greater than we see ourselves. Ask heaven, ask the spirit of God, how do you see me? We always limit ourselves for the most part. Most of us do. And before we can really take this stand and before we can enter into that place of warring for whatever we're standing for, we have to see ourselves as warrior. We have to recognize our authority. We have to recognize our, the prophetic vision that God has given us. Just, to, just take your family. Just start off with that at first, okay? I mean, if someone was knocking at your door, you love your family, right? And, and someone's saying, give me your kids right now. Are you kidding me? Every woman and man here, but every woman will fight to the death. You're not taking my kids. That's the spirit God is talking about. It's like, wait a minute. Again, now again, according to God's guidelines, I'm not talking about in the flesh, but <laughs> you never know nowadays. But anyway, so, um, but, but, you know, God knows the end from the beginning. And so we don't want to, again, as I said, we don't want to align with the enemy's lies. And so um, we're not powerless, and we have the mindset of a spiritual mother or mother, and, and God is just saying, come on, let's accelerate this vision. Understand your alignment. People are longing. Kids, younger generation are longing for mothers, spiritual moms, moms to speak into their lives. They're longing for that. And we're the answer. So the world is waiting for a woman who will own being a mother. It's an, we're not a biological person. We are a woman. We are a mother. We're not a, you know, what is it, a... a there, there's just all these different terminologies that they were giving women. Are you kidding me? You're either a man or you're a woman. Sorry. You got the parts. That's who you are. So anyway, so listen to what I, I just happened to look up what the Bible, I mean, what Webster's Dictionary says about a mother. 
So it's usually a mother as a term for a parent. It's a woman providing care or exercising influence or authority like that of a female parent. See, it's not just a mama, like a biological mama. It's a spiritual mama as well. And you have a lot to offer. The qualities and characteristics of a mother, such as maternal affection, protectedness, responsibility, etc. And then it said in, in Webster's, a woman who originates or creates something. So it said Marie Curie was the mother of radiology. So, so we have that creative anointing in us. And so Mother Teresa said, the assignment of motherhood can be expressed through every woman who is willing to step into and own their name. Mother is not a bad name. Got to watch how you say it, but mother is not a bad name. <laughs> Amen. So mother is a good name. Mother is to be honored. All right. And so God is saying to us, like Psalm 112 says, Wealth and riches shall be in your household, and your seed shall be mighty. And that, that word mighty means champions. Your seed will be champions. Amen. He's saying speak into those champions. Speak into their lives. Encourage them. Don't put them down. Speak into them. And so, uh, I mean, of course, we have to correct them at times. But, again, we love them, and we, we encourage them. So that's my word for today. I just want to close with this because... In Hosea 3, it says, Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. This is, this is end times. And the people shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. It's all going to turn around. But through this, through this difficult time that we're in, God is saying, it, until men and women, until we own who we are in Christ, until we see the glory that God has in us, until we recognize that, that we have the DNA of God until we see that we are victorious. Like the Bible says, we're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. We are mothers. We are nurturers. We are the ones who speak into people's lives. We are the one that, that loves and ha there's that nurturing part men don't have, right? And, and we don't have that, that, that rough exterior that men have. We're not supposed to, and so, right? And so, you know, God wants us to, <laughs> amen. God wants us to walk in the, what he's given us. You know, women don't act like men. Men don't act like women. Come on. Amen. And so, but God is saying, know who, who I've called you to be. Ask him, Lord, how do you see me? What's my next assignment? What's my portion right now? Esther, you know, she started out. She was, she was taken from her family. She went through that preparation season, and then she was positioned. And so that, that preparation season wasn't easy. She's taken, she was a young teenager taken from her family. I mean, think about that, how frightening that is. And then she had to go through that preparation and then all the, the, you know, the laws and everything. I mean, she could have been taken out by the king, but you know what? She did, she was obedient more. I think it was more, no, Haggai was like a type of Holy Spirit and he kept guiding her and directing her. That's the Holy Spirit in our lives because God wants to bring victory into our lives. So I'm going to ask you to stand. See, it's really important. It's really, really important that we recognize that we are mighty. I just remembered, I, I wanted to read. Um, I have the Passion Version here from, um, for the book of uh, Judges and Gideon. Listen to this. It says here, you know, God, you know, Midian... They were, oh, they were ravishing the people of Israel. And Gideon was from the tribe of Manasseh. And they were really oppressed. And the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, you know, hey, listen, you're a mighty man of God. Yahweh's, you know, God's presence goes before you. He, and he called him a man of fearless courage. That's what God's calling us, men and women of fearless courage. See, God calls those things that be not as though they are. It doesn't matter what you feel. God is saying, I see your destiny. And it says here, Gideon says, really? <laughs> but sir, if Yahweh is truly with us, why have all these troubles come to us? I'm like, hello. Why have all these troubles come, God? And where are all your miracle wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, did not Yahweh deliver us out of, Yah uh, out of Egypt? But now Yahweh has abandoned us and put us under the power of the Midianites. The Midianites always ravished and stole their finances and that kind of stuff. Anybody ever feel this way? Was it just Gideon? 
And it says, then Yahweh himself faced Gideon and said, am I not sending you with my presence? You, and you will have all you need. Go in the strength that you now have and rescue Israel from Midian's power. And Gideon said to him, but Lord, how could I ever rescue Israel? Of all the thousands of Manasseh, my clan is the weakest and I'm the least qualified. And Yahweh just said to him again, my presence and my power will be with you. Believe me, Gideon, you will crush the Midianites as easily as if there were only one man. Now, I really believe here that that's a word of the Lord to us because he didn't answer him why. He said, well, why is all this happening? God's not answering a whole lot of whys, right? But God is saying, my presence will go with you. Get into my presence. My presence will go with you. And you will take out what the enemy has stolen. God will bring restoration. You need to be shouting restore over your family, over your lives. And, 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 and I was, as I was meditating on this, one of Gideon's name literally means warrior. And it's so interesting because that was the, the, he didn't feel that at all, right? Sometimes that's where we're at. We don't feel that at all. We don't feel like this champion deliverer. But God is saying, listen, this is who I'm calling you today. Y'all champion warriors. And then, then it goes on, you read it, and, you know, so he, he puts out a fleece. And in verse 23, it says, listen, Gideon, just do what I'm telling you. Yahweh spoke to him and said, be at peace. Don't be afraid. You will not die. So Gideon built an altar to Yahweh there and named it Yahweh There is Peace. The altar is still standing there to this day. And so that's what God is saying to us today. We are warriors. He's saying, listen, that divine encounter, when you're worshiping God, when you're in his presence, you will, in, you will encounter the strength of God. The Bible says that when we're weak, we're made strong. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't you know that when the enemy's trying to get you depressed and all defeated and, and you're in that depressed state, you're weak? It's saying joy is our strength. Whether you have to fake it, you know, but it's like the Spirit of God is like, Lord, I'm choosing joy because he tries to get you to dwell on what's not. And God's saying, dwell on what is, my word. Dwell on what you know that I can do and break things open. See, we limit God because in the natural, we can't see. We're looking at the 900 chariots of iron. But God is saying, no, no, no. I have a plan. I see something so different for you. Don't limit me anymore. Go in peace because you're all champion warriors. Women, you are champion warriors. You are strong in the mind. You have that Deborah spirit, that Sarah one. I mean, listen, none of them were perfect. But God, the spirit of God dwelt in them, and that's what makes a difference. That's what makes a difference. So, Lord, I just thank you for the mighty women, the mama bears, the mama bears that, that have it together, that, God, you have a plan for each and every one of us. And, Holy Spirit, you're calling us to recognize that we, from the beginning of time, from before we were in our mother's womb, you called us to be warrior women, women that will not take the, 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 the mess of the enemy, that will not back down, that know their God and will do great exploits. Amen? So, Lord, I bless them as they're all here, you know, as they spend time with their family, their children today. And, Lord, I thank you, Father, for the spirit of the living God over each and every one of us and these mighty men that are in here. We honor you. We bless you. And we thank you for the spirit of the living God over us. In Jesus' name. Uh, Reyes, can you end with that Mama Bear song again? Lord, we just thank you that you are restoring all of us to who we are in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.